In the previous section, we discussed that projects carry a variety of risks which need to be identified, monitored, reviewed, and updated throughout the project lifecycle. One of the main responsibilities of the project manager is to manage these risks and reduce the impact on the project. Risk identification is the second stage of the risk management process and is an essential activity of project management. As such, you need to consider a broad range of risks that may affect your project. To assist with this activity, it may be useful to use a categorization tool to ensure that you consider and capture various categories of risk. Risk categories should reflect common types or sources of risk within a project, industry, or application area, and should be used during the risk identification discussion. One tool that is commonly used for categorizing risk is known as the PESTEL framework. PESTEL is an acronym and represents political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental dimensions of risk. So as a trigger, for example, you may commence with your risk identification session by asking, do we think we have any political risks? Let's look at our project through the political lens and see if we can identify these types of risks. Next, we ask the same question of economics and risks that may impact the economics of the project. By covering the risk categories, you should hopefully end up with a much broader coverage than itemizing risks randomly as they come to mind. Our experience in dealing with highly technical organizations is that there is often an overemphasis on possible technical risks. This is fine as long as other risk categories are given the same level of attention. Let's take a closer look at each of these categories. We will begin by considering political factors that may present risks for the project. Generally, when we refer to political factors, we consider the political category to include tax policy, trade restrictions, employment laws, and political stability. These are factors external to the business, which cannot be controlled, but can impact on your project or business. How you respond to changes in any political factors will determine how you will manage the risk. If, for example, your project or business activities are reliant on the importation of goods and trade restrictions are subsequently imposed, this will present a significant risk that will need to be responded to. Can you think of a political factor that has perhaps impacted on your project or business? What was the response to that particular situation? The second factor that may present risks to your project or business is economic. External economic factors include interest rates, economic growth, inflation, and exchange rates. Economic factors could change over the life cycle of a project and definitely over the life of a business. These changes represent a risk and need to be managed and responded to as they come up. For example, inflation may require a project manager to relook the pricing of resourcing and contracting, particularly for a large, complex project. An item like inflation can also force a business to increase prices of products which the market cannot absorb. These risks need to be identified as soon as possible so that the project manager has sufficient information and contingent resources to respond to such external factors that may impact the project. With the awareness of external economic factors that could likely impact on a project, internal economic factors would also need to be considered. Internal economic factors include the viability and soundness of the project or business and the consideration of financial resourcing required to execute the project effectively. For example, has the project manager appropriately considered all the resources required to ensure successful execution of the project? Next, social factors need to be considered in the risk identification process. Social factors refer to the social or cultural environment in which the project is executed or in which the business operates. Social factors include demographics, culture, lifestyle, wealth and social class within a particular environment and how these impact the successful execution of a project. A change in any social factors is likely to impact the project or business. As an example, a large construction company has been given the go-ahead to build office complexes 
near a conservation area. However, the demographics of people living in the surrounding area consist of conservationists and eco-warriors. This represents a risk to the completion of the project because of activities and possible protests that this part of the population may undertake to oppose the construction. Next, we consider technological factors. These include all those activities affected by new technology or the access to technology. Today, we see rapid changes in technology and this needs to be considered in a project or business setting. Depending on the type of business or project and the duration of the project, changes in technology can have a significant impact. I am sure that we have all had experiences where technology has become outdated and it is therefore important to adapt and keep up to date with technology in order to avoid any negative impacts on the project or business. The next category that needs to be considered is legal. This factor takes into consideration all legal aspects such as legislation, regulatory bodies, employment law and health and safety regulations and how these govern the activities of a project or business. Changes in any of the legal factors or failure to adhere to the law will put the project at significant risk with severe consequences. The only way to deal with legal factors is to remain compliant at all costs. The final category that needs to be considered is environmental. Environmental factors include impact of adverse weather, laws regarding pollution and recycling, use of green or eco-friendly products, and sustainability. There is a growing awareness and concern about the potential impact projects and businesses have on the environment. Governments are penalizing businesses for polluting and customers are switching brands to companies that apply environmentally sustainable practices. To conclude, identifying risks and potential risks is key to effective risk management. This step cannot be bypassed or done at a later stage of the project. Although we have outlined PESTEL as main risk categories that you might consider in your project, there may be other categories that you and your project stakeholders would like to add that are specific to your project or industry.